Hello and welcome to the Atiyah chapter of the National Junior Honor Society induction ceremony. I want to first congratulate all of the soon to be inductees on this noteworthy accomplishment. As we'll hear more about later, being a part of NJHS has to do with character. And our current situation certainly is a good test of one's character. Our students have had to demonstrate even greater sense of independence, self-direction, commitment, and motivation, all without the daily support from their teachers they would otherwise receive. For the academic, extracurricular, and personal success the students have achieved, they are truly to be commended. I'd also like to thank and compliment Ms. Bonsberg and Ms. Chow for their effort to keep NJHS going this year and for putting this alternate ceremony together. I truly regret that we cannot be together in person to celebrate, yet I still feel glad that we have found a way to share the occasion as a school community. We hope there are lots of you watching tonight as we welcome the 2020 National Junior Honor Society candidates. Welcome to all National Junior Honor Society candidates and their families. Please stand as you are able for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The National Junior Honor Society is more than just an honor roll. The guiding purposes of the National Junior Honor Society are to create enthusiasm for scholarship, to stimulate a desire to render service, to promote leadership and to develop character in the students of secondary schools. These purposes directly translate into the criteria used for membership selection of our ATIA chapter. Membership in the ATIA chapter of the National Junior Honor Society has been attained by effective demonstration of five qualities esteemed by the society. These qualities are as follows, scholarship, service, leadership, character, and citizenship. When applying for National Junior Honor Society, students verify participation in three clubs, sports, or artistic endeavors. In addition, they perform a minimum of four hours of community service. Finally, they write an essay about an event from this past year when they have demonstrated one of the five qualities of a National Honor Society member and reflect on their leadership experiences and core values. We are proud to introduce three sixth graders who will be sharing excerpts from their essays. Hawken Anderson, Phoebe Kim, and Aliza Khan. Hi, I'm Hawken Anderson, and I'll be sharing with you an excerpt from my NJHS essay. I recently demonstrated character by volunteering to show new students around Atia. My dad is a professional football coach, and we have moved several times, so I know how it is to be the new kid. It can cause anxiety, and it feels like you are all alone, and I don't want other people to go through that feeling of loneliness ever. So I introduced the new students to my friend group, made sure that they knew what to do, and tried to help them have the best first day. They take action to make a positive change and they finish the job by working hard and persevering. Being a leader is a choice and a big responsibility. This year I demonstrated leadership when I began the new Atia Chess Club. In order to accomplish this goal, I had to recruit students and find a sponsor, time and space, all this within the school guidelines. As president of the chess club, Mr. Hickey and I teach beginners how to play and strategize over, the, over this thrilling thinking game. Now that school has been closed due to the COVID-19, I am creating an online chess club. It will be a great opportunity to stay connected because it's that connection that brings us joy. I will teach beginners how to read and write chess notation, and the chess club can continue to explore virtual gameplay. When we, when we return to school, I look forward to growing the ATIA chess program. Phoebe Kim Journey. Writing this in the middle of this COVID-19 pandemic feels so surreal. Both my parents are doctors, and it's been a rocky road. The first two weeks were really rough for me, but then I realized that people were dying, so I should do everything in my power to make sure that people stay safe physically and mentally. I started baking and cooking like crazy to provide meals for doctors in the line of fire. I also emailed all my teachers to make sure that they were okay physically and mentally as well. 
I think that upholding a positive spirit and maintaining good character is what's going to keep us afloat during these dark times and just throughout life. Eliza Khan, Journey. Thank you, Hawken, Phoebe, and Eliza for sharing your experiences with us. Next, we are honored to introduce the seventh graders who will be sharing excerpts of their essays. Kiera Kurt, Dominica Calaro, Alyssa Machado, and Maggie Shambo will discuss the qualities of leadership, scholarship, and citizenship. This year, I displayed character when I became an assistant teacher at my dance studio. Every Tuesday, I spent an hour of my time teaching younger students with one of my teachers. I learned that a good leader can't just be a role model. They also have to demonstrate vital traits like compassion and empathy. A good leader helps empower others and nurture their path. Hello, my name is Domenica Calero and I am a seventh grader in Galaxy. Today I want to say a few quick words about leadership. Leadership is an important trait to have. It shows how you can cooperate with others. And leadership is not only being respectful, including everybody, and trying to help people show their true potential. Some people mistake bossiness for being a leader, but bossiness is being disrespectful and thinking you're number one. That pushes others not to work as well. Leadership is a fine balance of pushing people to do their best while growing and evolving into a better person. Thank you. I hope to see you all soon. Being a leader is a trait that everyone has inside of themselves. However, there is a key difference between being a leader and becoming a good leader. I try to be a good leader every day whilst in and out of school. For example, in a group project, I intend to help others understand their roles in the project and how each group member can put their strengths to good use. This year, I realized that being a good leader requires guiding instead of controlling others. To be a good leader, you have to be able to help others while not being controlling. This skill is something I struggled with in the earlier years and even in the beginning of this school year. NJHS 2020. One of the things I am most proud of is learning to take constructive feedback to improve the way I problem solve and continue to grow academically. I've learned so much from my peers and teachers this way. Additionally, I am so thankful for my family's support this year. My mom has assisted me with the stress of school, sports, and life drama in general. I struggled to navigate friendships this year, but I have overcome that. My dad has been helpful in guiding me through the challenges I faced along the way. I'm incredibly thankful to have parents who don't necessarily stress grades, but encourage effort. They value work ethic and hard work, which has made me a better person. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Kiera, Domenica, Alyssa, and Maggie for sharing your experiences with us. Next, we are honored to introduce the eighth graders who will be sharing excerpts from their essays. Alan Daniel, Nathaniel Nelson, Elizabeth Siegel, and Katie Stanek will discuss the qualities of service, citizenship, and character. The other day, I heard the quote, the higher you fly, the more meaningless you seem to the people who are still on the ground. At first, I found this message to have a negative tone. However, when I put some thought into it, I realized that it had a positive sound to it as well. It's not saying to not work hard or succeed, but to also bring others with you. What's the point of being the best and having a lot of knowledge if you're not going to use it to help other people? If you acknowledge others and aid them to succeed, then they may also fly alongside you, which makes everything more meaningful. Even the smallest acts of service can put the world back on its feet. For example, it may take dozens of workers to even run the smallest of food bank organizations. However, it only takes one person to take a step forward, bring people together, and make it possible. I got the chance to use my passion for writing in service for others. In my writing, we were assigned a project to demonstrate how powerful writing can be. 
My group's idea was to place compliments onto post-it notes and have them across the mirrors of the girls' bathrooms. Especially during this age of technology, middle school girls can feel pressured to look in certain way, a certain way and fit into society's norms. Through this project, both staff and students can be reminded of their value and that beauty comes in different types of forms. Furthermore, it made me pleased to know that I not only used my writing skills to an advantage, but also helped make someone's day a little brighter. And although grades are a significant part of school, the memories I make there are far more worthwhile. And whether they have made a positive or negative impact on me, those memories help me grow the qualities I possess. These experiences help me grow into both a National Junior Honor Society candidate and a person I aspire to be. Thank you. Thank you, Alan, Nathaniel, Elizabeth, and Katie for sharing your experiences with us. Next, eighth grader Sarah Kwan will share her reflections on assuming a leadership role at ATIA this year. When there's a group of people, there will always be leaders and followers. As an eighth grader this year, I was given many opportunities to lead a group of people. From extracurricular activities to the classroom, there were always chances to step up and be a leader. It was based on if I chose to step up and take the leadership role that made me a leader or a follower. In the beginning of eighth grade, I joined cross country just as I had done the two years before. I didn't think much of it, expecting things to be just like last year. However, when I walked in that first day, I knew that that would not be the case. Unlike 6th or 7th grade, there were people who actually looked up to the 8th graders and respected us because we had one or two more years of experience than them. I couldn't just goof off or slack at practices, but I would have to set a good example for those who were just starting. This leadership role could be looked upon as a blessing, but it was a responsibility. I was not voted or announced a leader as his president or CEO is but I was expected to lead my peers through my actions. Throughout the season, I never skipped a practice and ran every race with spirit and excitement. If I was not racing, I was cheering on the sixth or seventh graders, jumping and screaming their names. I made sure to respect the coaches and my peers because that is what the foundation of a good leader is, respect. By the end of fall, the girls had one of the best records in Atiyah's history. But in the end, it was not the records or the medals that displayed signs of sufficient leadership, but it was the team's strong bond and teamwork that shined. <clears throat> One would think that in a solo sport, there is not much room for teamwork, but no falser words have been spoken. Even though we are all fighting for one spot, we encourage each other and lift each other up. That is the beauty of cross country. It doesn't appear to be a team sport, but you need a team more than anything if you want to win. And in order to have a good team, good leadership is a necessity. Even though my 8th grade year ended a bit earlier than what I had presumed because of COVID-19, the experiences and memories will be priceless because of the lesson I would learned at the end of the day. A good leader does not boast or set oneself above others but a good leader will humble themselves and do what's good for the team. Thank you, Sarah, and all the other students who shared with us today. It takes courage to stand for what you believe in and to share your stories with others. And thank you to all the National Honor Society candidates this year for serving as role models in your school and in your community.
here together this evening to present to you the 2020 ATIA Chapter National Junior Honor Society candidates. Thank you. On behalf of the faculty of William ATIA Middle School, I hereby accept these candidates as full-fledged members of the National Junior Honor Society. I hope they will be found worthy of the trust imposed upon them. I now ask Johnny Raikou to lead the new National Junior Honor Society members in the Society Pledge. Members, please repeat after me. I pledge myself to uphold the high standards of the National Junior Honor Society to which I have been selected, striving in every way by word and deed to make its ideals the ideals of my school and my life. You have just pledged yourself to maintain the high standards of the National Junior Honor Society. I congratulate you. It marks the recognition of work well done. May it bring you and others inspiration to go forward to greater achievements in the future. It is now our pleasure to share the names of the first and second year inductees.
congratulations to the 2020 first and second year inductees of the National Junior Honor Society. Let's have a round of applause. And now we're going to present the third year inductees. The inductees will receive membership pins that they have earned from three years of exceptional scholarship, citizenship, character, leadership, and service. It is a bond you all share. Congratulations to the third year inductees of the National Junior Honor Society. Let us have a round of applause for all of the 2020 inductees. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Rector. To all, thank you for joining us today to witness the 2020 National Junior Honor Society induction ceremony. Thank you also for the help from our student essay readers and ceremony participants. While we wish we could come together and honor our inductees in person, we greatly appreciate you joining us virtually this evening. Congratulations to everyone and have a wonderful night.